What are you doing in here? Apple juice, anybody? Right guys, in this video, I'm going to answer a question about scales that I get all the time. The Ionian mode, the Dorian, the Phrygian, the Lydian, the Mixolydian, the Mixomatosis, the Fallopian flat nine, there's all these bizarre types of scales. And then there's the melodic minor scale and the natural minor scale and the, you get the idea, right? There's loads of people really confused about what to, which scales are really important and which scales they have to learn and in which order. That's what we're going to be talking about in this video and I'm going to prove to you why it's way easier than you think and you can boil everything down to five scales. Five scales, that's all you need. Before we do this, by the way, I need to show you what Gav's doing. This is Gav. Hey Gav. I'm here. Ah, as many of you know, we were over in, Gav and I, brothers from another mother, look at this. Follically challenged. <laughs> we were over in New York. Where are you? Going? We were over in oh, New sorry. York. Oh, no, yeah. We were over in New York earlier this year, recording a ton of courses with guys like Damien Erskine and Steve Jenkins and Rich Brown and Evan Marion and Adam Neely and all of the, Rufus Philbert, all of these cool cats, right? And we're just editing one down now. I've got to show you. It's wicked. Give it a baby. <gasps> That's not going in the edits. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, that was the course that we're editing uh, with Steve Jenkins. As with all our courses, it's going straight in the academy as well. So if you're an academy member, you're going to get access to it. If you're not an academy member, you should join up like yesterday and get in among what we're doing, taking bass education to the next level and making a real difference uh, for bass players around the world. Now, without further ado, let's get on to some scales. Aha! Okay guys, so let's talk about scales. If you're anything like me, you were super confused about them or are super confused about them. And hopefully today I'm going to be able to boil it down into, into a system that's a little bit easier to understand. So one thing that really helped me out is understanding that there are only really five scale types. And yes, there are, you know, mixomatosis flat nine scales and fallopian sharp four scales and everything in between and all of these weird and wonderful scales, right? But what I see students do constantly is gravitate towards those types of scales instead of just the stuff that's just going to make a damn difference, right? Just learn these scales. You're going to use them every day. Just learn that stuff first and don't gravitate towards the hoopla. So let's talk about the five main scale types that you want to be focusing on. The first is the diatonic major scale. For me, I would say this is the most important scale that you can ever learn, right? So just to put that into some sort of context for you, if I was to play something like... major scale yeah I did sort of like a I think I did one little passing note in there but all of that was just major scale it was actually just a C major scale yes I was playing a D Dorian at one point yes I was playing a G Mixolydian at one point but it's all it all was built from the C major scale and that's what really helped me just get my head into the game was just to think what where do all of these scales originate from you know, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, seven scales there, okay, that you'll, you'll hear people talking about all the time, right? And I hear my students talking about all the time. 
but do they really know their major scale well enough? And in my um, experience, most people don't, right? So just spend so much time learning that basic major scale. Just a little quick tip for you. I can't obviously go through every scale type and all the tips that I've got because this video would turn into a, a 10 hour video instead of a hopefully 10 to 15 minute video. And I say that because I've actually got a course inside the academy, the school that I run, um, which is obviously all online, um, called the Harmonic Layering Course, which is all about scales, arpeggios, and a complete system, and it is 10 hours long. But just to give you a quick tip, right, you should learn your major scales from three different fingerings. Firstly, the first finger, makes sense, right? So this is C major scale. Okay, that's from the first finger. Then from the second finger, and then from the little finger. If you learn those three fingerings just for that major scale, you can cover the entire neck with those three fingerings. That's all you need, nothing else, okay? So if I was to start here, I'm starting from my first finger in position, yeah? Then I go into the little finger position, then into the uh, fourth finger position, then into the little finger position and then down, and then I can go down the second finger position, into the fourth finger, into the second finger position, up the, the second finger, down the first finger position. It just gives you all of those notes, so I'm not memorizing all, a load of different, a, a load of different patterns. I'm memorizing three patterns for the entire major scale, and it means I can play all up and down the neck with complete freedom. Easy as that. Now the gag is then to use that same system across the modes, but remember that the parent scale for all of those modes is the diatonic major scale, right? So that is your first scale that you really need to nail to the wall, diatonic major scale. Then you can start working on your modes off the back of that, but the diatonic major scale is where it's at, right? And I've had some people in the in the uh, the past say, "Whoa, whoa, whoa, whoa!" You know, just think about how uh, useful the minor pentatonic scale is. Well, okay, yeah, it's really useful, and yeah, admittedly, that's all that a lot of guitar players can do. But yeah, I get it, right? It's important. But where does it come from? Let's take the C major scale, right? Well, where does the A minor, minor pentatonic come from? It comes from the C major scale, right? So that minor pentatonic that everybody... That's all from the C major scale. It's all from the major scale. What about all the major pentatonic scales? They're all from the major scale. Right, so all the pentatonic scales are all from the major scale, right? So all the minor pentatonic scales are all from the major scale. So I'm hoping, hopefully, you're seeing this kind of pattern that there's so much derived from that major scale that you just can't get away from understanding how important it is. So the second scale type that I recommend that you learn is the diminished scale. And there's, there's two versions of the diminished scale. They're very similar. One's called the half whole and one's called the whole half. Um, I'll just show you one, Let's, it's a C root, right, so we're going to go half step, and when I say half whole, it means a half step and a whole step and a half step and a whole step, right? So let me play that for you, let's just give it a C root, we're going to do a half step, a whole step, 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 okay, that's just a... super easy to remember as well, right? So because you just go one, two, four, slide, one, two, four, slide, one, two, four, slide. Okay, and then just onwards, right? So that's the diminished scale, and you can play whole half. So that would be um, whole, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole, half, whole. So it's just the same thing, but instead of half whole, it's whole half. So the next scale to learn is the harmonic minor scale. Let, again, let's keep it in the key of C. Okay, there's the, the root note C. And it's really simple. It's just like a C uh, natural minor, which is... Okay, 
just like that, but with a major seven instead of a flat seven. And it's got the real oriental. And harmonic minors are great because, well, they're great for improvising over minor two, five, ones and other things, but that's for a different video. And remember, with all of these scales I'm talking about, you can learn the modes of them as well. What we're talking about is the scale, okay? Learn the scale, then learn the modes afterwards, but make sure you really know that scale before you worry about the modes. So the next scale type is the melodic minor. Melodic minor. And this is next because it is very similar to the harmonic minor, right? So the harmonic minor is the... So the melodic minor is exactly the same as the harmonic minor, but it's got a natural six. in a lot of different ways but again and, and again you can use the modes from the melodic minor scale but you've got to get the melodic minor down first you've got to get the scale down first and the last scale guys is the whole tone scale and admittedly I actually don't use it that much um, but it's, it's a really valuable scale to, to know and to be able to hear because you'll actually hear it in a lot of music a lot of film music you'll, you'll just hear that and you know that, that vibe let's do it again so here we're on a C root finger one finger four and then you, you're going up in whole tones so the next note is the G flat here and then you know second finger fourth finger and then up to the C and then you just keep on going it's a pattern I just use that one two four and I move down a string up a fret down a string up a fret quite a cool sound over a, a dominant chord but again to get into the uses of these scales it's a uh, it'd take us 10 <laughs> it'd take us 10 hours so just to recap guys on what we've been talking about there's five main scale types I want you to worry about five main scale types first of all it's the diatonic major scale it's the most important scale all the pentatonic all the major pentatonic all the minor pentatonic all the blues scale stuff it's all derived from that major scale the seven modes of the diatonic major scale obviously are all from the major scale um you know like dorian phrygian lydian mixed lydian all of that stuff is all from the major scale so i can't stress enough how important learning the major scale is it's absolutely the number one most important scale that you'll ever learn because everything else is derived from it right all of the well all of the diatonic scales are derived from it moving on from that it's the diminished scale I do use them uh, you know when I see a diminished chord or for substitutes over a dominant chord they're fun as well um, the next is a harmonic minor scale um, again great sound you've got that that major seven and the flat six there, which gives it a real sort of like oriental vibe about it. Oriental, is that the right? Who knows, anyway. But it's got a great sound to it. Um, for me personally, I use it a lot on minor two five ones and when I'm improvising and stuff like that. And then we've got the melodic minor scale, which is exactly the same as the harmonic minor scale, but it's got the, um, the, the natural six in there. It's a 
great scale and probably one of my most used scales in a way. And again, you can use the modes from the Melodic Minor as well, but make sure you get the Melodic Minor down first. They're just modes, right? The, 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 the scalar system is what you want to be worrying about, getting that system down. Um, and then after the melodic minor, we've got the whole tone. And the whole tone, again, I actually don't really use the whole tone that much, but I love the sound of it and I should probably use it more. So uh, note to self, got to use the whole tone and get it into my playing a bit more. So guys, hopefully you enjoyed that lesson. Um, again, if you really are into mastering this stuff on the bass and you really do want to get these scales and these arpeggios and all of this stuff that I talk about all the time, if you've been following me for any length of time, you know I talk about this stuff a lot, right? Because it is so important. This is the building blocks of what we do um, as bass players and musicians. We've got to be able to learn and understand scales and arpeggios because it's like being able to understand, you know, you need to learn how to understand grammar to be able to speak properly. And this is what we do um, with our instruments. We learn the, the, you know, the theory behind what we're playing so we can really expand on what we're doing. If you do want to check out the Academy of Scots Bass Lessons, we've got a full 10 hour course, guys, on this stuff. And it doesn't just throw you into the deep end, it takes you, it takes you right from the start, right through all of the arpeggios, all of the arpeggio fingerings, they are very specific. Then onto the scales, all through the scales, all the fingerings, again, very specific, the fingerings that you need to be using. And then on from that, it goes on to practical application of the actual arpeggios and scales. And what is the point if we're not using this stuff in practice? You've got to be able to use this stuff in practice. Please, please, please do not just run up and down scales all day, mindlessly practicing how to play them faster. It's a total waste of your time. And, um, and I see so many students doing it as well so please don't do that learn how to use these in a practical way and you'll you'll really surprise yourself um as do so many students that i work with and remember guys if you do want to check out the academy you can get a completely free 14 day trial okay a free 14 day free trial so you can try out everything just to see if it's for you and that gives you access to all of the step-by-step -step courses all of the weekly live seminars with me with damien erskine with rufus philpot with steve jenkins is going to be coming up with you know all these crazy guys um and probably the the best online um, educational, base educational community in the world. And just if you are an academy and watching this, massive shout out for you guys. I know we've been having a ton of fun in the forum recently. Um, and I just want to say thanks to all you guys while I've got you. So if you're not an academy member, grab your free trial, get involved today. I would love to see you in there. Anyway, guys, um, that's it for me and George. Where's George? George, chilling down there. And Gav chilling over here. Bye, guys. I will see you in the show. Gav's going to see in the shed. <laughs> Take these guys, bye. Whoa, 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 where are you going? If you haven't subscribed to the Scots Bass Lessons channel yet here on YouTube, click the link, subscribe. I release two videos like this every single week. You can also check out our other videos over there. And if you've not checked out scotsbasslessons.com membership, check it out. You can grab your 14-day free trial over there.